That's the kind of spot that I like for snakehead. You see that little patch right there? Oh my God, there he is. I don't know how I'm gonna get him out of there. Big snakehead, you guys. So a little bit about this spot. Uh, if you look out there, this used to be a, like a farm and it flooded. So it's not that deep. And that's why I kind of, if you look all the way back, you get the same kind of vegetation. All fish just move right there. Uh, but in here you have snakehead, you have bowfin. And in today's video, my goal is to just get one of those because I haven't caught either of them. So I don't care how big they are. I don't care how many I get, I just want one fish. Thanks for watching you guys. Oh, guys, look at that. It's a snakehead. Look how prehistoric that thing looks. This is a northern snakehead, and that's where they live, in swampy stuff like that. And this is an invasive species. Technically, I'm supposed to kill this. If I kill this, some guys will get upset. If I let it go, some guys will get upset. So I'm not gonna show the release and I'm just gonna leave it as a mystery. Oh, look what I almost stepped on. Wonder if that's poisonous. I don't know. Better be careful. We're in a body now, folks. The audio in this next clip is a little crappy, so I wanna take a second to kind of explain what was going on. Going into this, I had about three or four hours to fish. The last time that I fished for snakehead, I left the spot thinking, man, I wish I would've switched it up and fished more finesse style baits. So at this point in time, I had two bites on finesse style baits. I thought I was onto a pattern. I went back, I fished about a mile of the stretch, pitching to any little piece of vegetation or lay down with no success. And then about an hour or two in, the sun came up and I picked up my frogging rod and I started pitching all the way into the back into some thick stuff. And then this happened. That's the kind of spot that I like for snakehead. You see that little patch right there? Cause nobody's gonna be able to make that cast. Oh my God, there he is. I don't know how I'm gonna get him out of there. Big snakehead, you guys. That's a nice one. He freaking absolutely hammered that frog right as it fell in there. That's that's a new PB for me. Awesome. I know all my friends out there that target snakehead are rolling their eyes right now because it's not a giant fish, but snakehead had been on my bucket list for a really long time, so I was super excited. That fish either hit the frog as soon as it hit the water, or in my opinion, a little bit before it hit the water. And that's a testament to how aggressive and powerful these fish are. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the setup that I'm using. I'm using a 7'4 Tatula. It's a flipping stick. Heavy action, T-wing system, 7.3 reel, 50 pound braid. Any high speed reel will work for this. Tekel honker frog, such a versatile frog. You could throw it into really thick cover. And that's the beauty of this setup. You could really pull some fish out of some 
gnarly stuff. He smashed it. There he is. <laughs> I don't know how I got that fish out. Look at that thing. Looks like something you'd see in Jurassic Park, to be honest. What an amazing fish. That's the problem with these things. It's, once they're introduced to an ecosystem, it's really hard for the native species to compete with them. All right, so today I fished miles and miles of water that looked like this. I only got two bites in open water like this, and the obvious stuff, but I got like 12 to 13 blow ups in one little, I don't even know what you want to call that. It looks like a puddle. And I think what's happening is most people that fish here fish the obvious stuff, and when they catch a snakehead, they kill it. And they're overlooking this, A, because they don't think a fish will live back there, and B, even if they're able to make the cast and hook a fish, how the heck are you gonna land a fish out of that? Um, I'm lucky that I thought to throw it back there. I don't know how the heck we were able to land those fish, but I'm glad I did. This has been an amazing trip. If you guys know me, you know I'm more of an up north guy, so we're gonna be switching gears, getting our fly stuff ready to fish the Great Lake tributaries. I'm gonna be doing some salmon fishing, but this fall I'm gonna mainly focus on getting big steelhead and big brown so if you're into that kind of stuff make sure you subscribe click the bell so you don't miss out i got some heat coming your way thanks for watching you guys